Hi everyone, we've got the full list of the Master Set players from the Gallery of Grades event, including the brand new Bobby Orr, which was, again, one of the coolest ads, I think, in terms of icon players that we've gotten in the last, I don't know, maybe ever in Huts. Going forward, now that they have his player rights, I hope that he's one of the ultimate icons going into next year because he definitely deserves it. All right, so in this video, I'm going to cover all 10, well, 11 Master Set players from this event. I'm going to go over the ones that I've used personally, the ones I've seen used again against me, the community feedback, if they're worth it, and what ones you should just avoid. Again, any of these players are either one of your favorites or on the team that you like, make them disregard these entire rankings. Let's get into it. All right, let's touch on our only D-rated player, and that's the 87 Ed Belfort. This is A, unbelievable card art, and B, one of the coolest like icon players that you can use for goaltender the issue is that he's six foot like until ea addresses this issue fully they've done a better job in the last couple years because you can use goalies that are like six two and above but for the most part it's whoever's biggest or jacob markstrom so this one's just not worth it unless you're a belfour or a stars fan Jumping up into the C tier, we've got the left-handed defenseman, Megan Keller, with two-way defenseman and playmaking boost. Two-way defenseman is one of the easiest accessible synergies in the game. She's got gold elite edges and tape to tape. The reason why she's in the C tier and not in the D tier, she's got good ratings across the board. 89 speed and acceleration, 90 balance, 85 body checking, get us up to 95 defensive awareness. The issue is that she's 165, meaning that she's really not going to be able to throw anyone off the puck effectively. If she had, you know, truck heel and shutdown, for example, that might change it. But regardless, I think that we need to take into account that you can't always activate every ability. A lot of a lot of us now have decent team, and every master set player you put in, you can't just assume you're going to be able to activate all the abilities. So this isn't a terrible card because you're not going to use any of the abilities on her, but there are definitely better left-handed defense. Also in the C tier, we've got the Kendall Coin Schofield. Now I'll be honest with you, cards that have just incredible speed have a place in this game right now, especially early on. And she's obviously very small at 5'5", 126, two-way forward and speed boost. If you can get speed boost to activate, she's, got, she's one of the fastest cards in the game. And she has wheels, which does make it worth it. Obviously, I would think that there's probably a lot of other left-handed wingers that you would use over her. There are, it is the position that has the most options to you. And that's why she's in the C tier, because simply if she was right-handed, where there's a lot less great option, I think there'd be a little bit more run. But because of that, she's in the C tier. Phil Esposito, is also in the C tier for me. I've had a few people mention that they've used him. It's just his skating. Like, if you're going to spend the amount of coins you will need and power up collectibles to upgrade all of these cards, you have to take that into account. Close Quarters was nerfed. It's no longer overpowered. I think that it is still a very good ability, but more on the silver side because it is an animation-based ability. It is not an ability that where it just jacks up attributes. It will actually catch a puck no matter how it's sitting and fire you at full power power and accuracy which is why it was so good in prior years but because of the nerf it's a little bit worse and because they eight ability points that's expensive big tipper's fun but not really going to do anything for you and just all around a very mediocre stats across the board and then lastly in the c tier we've got the 87 patrick wah if you are going to make a goaltender from this event it would be patrick wah in my opinion he's got butterfly effect and post to post good synergies that will help out with the skating uh, boost the issue is again 62190 does have low aggression usually wah cards have this insanely high aggressiveness rating but his doesn't the real reason is that it's just not worth it at all to spend this kind of investment on a goaltender unless you're a fan of patrick wah moving on to the b tier and this is purely for fun. The 87 Al McKinnis, two-way defenseman and shooting boost. The reason why I personally have him in the B tier, haven't seen anyone use him. This is simply for fun. However, he's 6'1", 204, so he's not giant, but he is does have 87 speed and acceleration with 90 balance. 83 body checking, defense, two-way defenseman helps out his defensive awareness to stick checking. The real fun here is if you can get shooting boost active, you have the best shot in the entire game. 97 accuracy and power with thunderclap and silver 1T. Like if there was a way to actually score D to D one timers, McKinnis is going to be it. And you have to remember that with cards that have really high shooting ratings early on, they take advantage of the fact that goaltenders don't have very high ratings. Ratings matter for goaltender, but obviously the go-to shots will always score. But when it comes to just shots, if you have someone that has drastically high accuracy and power against, you know, 88 goaltenders, they're going to score quite a bit. This 
this is a card I'm going to make just to try out because he looks so much fun. And right-handed defense doesn't have a ton of options. Also in the B tier, I've used this card quite a bit, and he was good. I actually really enjoyed him. He's got offensive defenseman and shooting boost. So again, if you're trying to get shooting boost activated, here is where I would recommend Gonchar if you don't have Brian Leach. So if you aren't going to make team builders or you don't want to invest in making Brian Leach, Gonchar is almost identical. Seeing eye... I'm starting to think that Heat Seeker might be a little bit more useful. However, again, seeing eye, if you take those wrist shots while they're screened, it will go straight in. But stick him up makes up for the fact that he's got extremely low body checking. If you pair him with someone a bit bigger on the right side, like Al McKinnis, you've got a really good defense pair here. But yes, I think that if you've already got Brian Leach, I probably wouldn't choose Gonchar. On to the beats here, the 87 Sidney Crosby. I say this quite often. I can't ever get Sidney Crosby cards going. I don't know why. Every year, I try and it never works. However, my the feedback from my community, and if you aren't in my Discord, we've got 4,000 members in there that just talk hut all day long. So when I talk about feedback from my community, it's a ton of it. He's got one of the best ability combos in the game in Elite Edges and Unstoppable Force. 90 speed, 90 acceleration, 90 balance. The reason why Crosby cards are always kind of mediocre is simply because if he's an 87 overall, all of his stats are 87. He does everything good, but nothing great. This card, however, because it is a custom build earlier on in his career, he's a little bit faster. He's got 87 on the draws. Really bad defensive awareness, which kind of sucks, but his shot is good and his hand stats are almost max. Really, really fun looking card. If you've already got Nico Heischer, I'd probably just hold on if you've made him from the prior event, but this Crosby card looks really good. Also in the A tier, the 88 Bobby Orr. Now you have to use this card effectively. I think a lot of people, especially the 1% that are all just trying to win the NHL World Championship are like six foot 198 lol like i hate what that's done to the player base because we just don't get excited for good for exciting players that being said 94 speed 94 acceleration 92 agility one of the best defensive skaters in the game hand stats are good defensive awareness is at 91 stick checking 91 body checking only 80 here's the thing heat seeker makes this card awesome i have been throwing it in the net with Bobby Orr from the point on just wrist shot. Elite Edges allows you to make cuts left and right very quickly. It activates without the puck. Gold Wheels, here's the thing. If you can put Gold Wheels on this Bobby Orr card and you go end-to-end -end diagonally, it is very difficult to stop. I just played someone in Hut Champs that roasted me senseless with this. It is a very, very expensive investment. So if you have a really top-end team, you're probably going to have a hard time activating it. But good lord, when you put wheels on this card, it is nuts. On to the S tier. We'll start with the 87, Yarmir Yager. Every time a Yarmir Yager card comes out, it's always, is he going to be good or is it going to be trash like it was in NHL 22? This one is in the good category. Gold Unstoppable Force with 6'3", 230 size, 89 speed and acceleration, but Sneaky, his agility rating is so high at 95, meaning that he's going to be able to make those cuts and move left and right very quickly with his size and Unstoppable Force. His defensive awareness is non-existent, body checking is only 80, but his hand stats are 95. This is the left-handed version of Alex Ovechkin. The only issue is that there are so many good left-handed wingers in the game. Like, if you've got Heritage McDavid or even X-Factor McDavid, Maybe you've made Luke Robitaille, invested in Tabo Teravainen, Kuznetsov. Like, there are so many good options. If you have all of those or some of them, it's going to be tough to justify, but this is one of the best cards in the game, in my opinion. And then we got Ovi. The best card from this release, in my opinion. His shot is automatic. Gold Unstoppable Force means that he's not getting knocked off the puck. Great body checking at 87 overall and 90 speed and acceleration. Finally, a good skating Ovi card. Don't overthink this. Right-handed winger is the weakest spot among the top-end cards in the game right now. In my opinion, if there is one you are going to make without a doubt it's Alex Ovechkin now I want to bring this up as well because a lot of people are saying that it's very expensive too many power-up collectibles not worth it that kind of thing and while I understand that there is a significant investment power-up collectibles are extremely easy and cheap to make you also get a lot of them for free from every event but I want to show you guys something else before you invest all of your power-up collectibles. So let's say Al McInnes, who I'm going to make because he looks like fun. It'll cost you 10,000 coins to get his first tier. You can go all the way to his 85, and you're renting him. Remember, one power-up collectible, you will get it back. And obviously, 85 is not 87 overall, but it's a good test to see if you enjoy these cards. At the end of the day, it's costing you 5,000 coins to try him out in a setting where you're going to use him a lot. So like rivals, squad battles, champs, instead of just going into like hut rush where 
the game plays entirely different as does in moments. That is what I would recommend you guys do before you invest fully if you want to try one out. You're losing 5,000 coins, guys. This is a very cheap way to test out the card. All right, guys, that's going to do it for my ranking list of the Gallery of Greats event. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below, and I will see you next time. Have a good one.